A further look at this, Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. Uh, Congressman, thank you for joining us. Where are we going bet, wrong in the world that this keeps happening and we have not been able to stop some of these attacks? I think it's been a couple of things. Number one, our intelligence community does a very good job. Our law enforcement does a very good job. They're stopping way more plots than are getting through. The old saying, though, they have to be right 100% of the time. The problem is it took us too long to recognize the terror threat of ISIS. And so you had this ISIS growth for a year or two years before we even responded to it. And that began to build into the narrative of these, you know, jihadists that are uh, mm -hmm. in many cases homegrown, some cases recruited directly by ISIS, to believe that this was in fact I mean, of the next caliphate that was foretold. And so when you have something that looks like it's, in fact, what's prophesied, you build recruiters and followers because they believe it. Crushing this caliphate, crushing ISIS, crushing al-Qaeda, and all these other terror groups is going to take away from that narrative. It's not going to stop every terrorist attack, but it's going to begin to pair out the people that want to do it because they think it's part of what's prophesied. Okay, well, we're crushing them, in a sense, in Iraq and in Syria. We're taking back some of that territory, the U.S. and its allies are, but holding it. And keeping it for the long run is a huge problem. How do you solve that? Well, that is a tough problem. The problem in the in the long run is ungoverned spaces. This is what we had pre-9-11 in Afghanistan, ungoverned space. It's just like a unhealthy body. Bacteria will grow. It's well, the same in a country. How do we fix it then? Syria is the next front. Well, look, you're going to have to ultimately build or help build. We're not, we can't be the ones doing all of it, uh, establishing governance afterwards. For instance, in Syria right now, with the existence of Assad, most of Syria is ungoverned, and Assad will never take control of all of Syria again, even with Russia's help. So we have to have a follow-on. You have to have a ceasefire with a governing opportunity for disaffected folks, and that's probably going to take some U.S. military muscle to enforce a ceasefire, or at least the threat of it. Yeah, certainly. Uh, that could take a lot of people, a lot of troops over there, to, um, to monitor that and uh, to set up those no-fly zones if, if that is indeed what they do. I want to ask you about this. Uh, President Obama announcing that they're releasing more prisoners from Guantanamo Bay. The New York Times reporting that he plans to transfer 17 or 18 of the 59 remaining detainees before he leaves office. Will President Obama be on track to totally clear out and close down Gitmo before, he, uh, before Donald Trump takes over? Uh, look, I think he's gonna. Sounds like he's gonna release these uh, these these uh, bad guys. One of the things to keep in mind is that you have. You know, 17 of them. I think they're talking about being released. These are the worst of the worst. These aren't the people that we picked up on a battle. These are the people that, you know, we know committed terrorist attacks and everything else. I think what his goal is, is to have the number so low that, in fact, he tries to get Congress in the future to say, boy, we're spending all this money for just a few folks, and that's his way of de facto shutting it down. Well, I, uh, I want to ask you about that. I think we have to keep it open. We have a look at, at some of the costs. It costs $445 million to keep Guantanamo Bay running each and every year. They say that you need 200 more in additional, uh, $200 million more to keep it, just to keep it operational long term. They say the cost per prisoner at Gitmo, seven and a half million dollars a year. And then the administration wants you to know it just costs one hundred thousand dollars if you put somebody in Supermax. So they are making that argument. They are appealing to Congress. Let's save taxpayers some money and let these guys out. What do you think? Are you, are you going to go along with that? Well well, first off, I, there's no amount of money we can spend that's too much to save American people, the American people. When you put a terrorist in Supermax, it becomes a target. But the other issue is this. Guantanamo Bay is far bigger than just the detention operations. I've seen the detention operations. It's a small part of the wider mission of Guantanamo Bay, which is force projection in, in that area of the world. So, uh, look, I, I think ultimately we need to come to a conclusion and figure out what that is, but it's not willy-nilly releasing 17 people to get your last say, like I think the president's doing. So do you think Congress will push to keep it open? Yeah, we have. I mean, we have basically since the war on terror, and the war on terror continues. And that's the thing to keep in mind. You know, you have indefinite detention operations because this war continues and this enemy still exists. So yeah. I think as long as that's the case, we need to do it. Well, uh, one of the hard things with Donald Trump is, is predicting how he will come down on these things. He said he wants to put more bad guys in Guantanamo Bay, but he's also looked at the cost and he says it's awfully expensive. You saw what he did with Boeing, threatening to pull out of that deal with uh, Air Force One. So. Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, Congressman, thanks a lot. Say hi to my folks back there in Rockford, Illinois. We'll see I'll you say hey to Rockford.